Due to an overwhelming number of requests, we will be investigating the secrets of the EPG-1 Grenadier weapon. This is Ascendance from 4FS Gaming, and as usual, this video will go in depth and give you a comprehensive account of what this gun can do and how it can be used to maximum effect. The EPG is a fan favourite weapon in Titanfall 2. It fires a bolt of blue energy that will kill any pilot it touches, and sometimes others that just get too close. It has perfect accuracy, strong anti-Titan damage, but careless users will be punished by a sluggish projectile speed and punishingly slow fire rate. As implied, the EPG fires a projectile shot. The clumsy travel time of 38 meters per second is the slowest of basically every other weapon in the game, with the exception of a few anti-Titan weapons. This means that unless you only want to use the EPG at close range, you will have to practice placing and timing your shots, as well as having skilled prediction of where your enemy will be going. Each bolt has no gravity however, so you can hit stationary targets at range with extreme ease. The EPG carries 5 shots in the magazine, with an additional 3 shots with extended mag. However, it is the fire rate of the weapon that really holds this gun back the most. It is only able to fire a single shot every second, so if you miss a shot completely, then you will be left praying that your R201 hip firing opponent will miss half a magazine before you get to shoot again. In many engagements, if you and your opponent see each other at the same time on the ground, you will only get one chance to land that perfect shot and win the engagement. On the upside, one chance, if you are good, is all that you will ever need. The EPG does 100 damage to the body of a pilot at any range. It also has a crit modifier, which will allow you to deal 125 damage, which is not needed on direct hits, but it's still good to know about. There is no range falloff curve for this weapon. The only factor that prevents consistent damage at long range is the projectile travel time, and thus the increased difficulty to hit targets. But it would be a shame to make one of these videos and not put some kind of graph in it, so luckily the EPG gives us this opportunity through its splash damage characteristic. Targets near the point of impact that are not directly hit with the bolt will also take damage, at a rate which is reduced the further away from the epicenter of the explosion they are standing, or running, or jumping, or sliding. We can see here that if you just miss, and I mean by a meter or less, then you will still kill the pilot, so go ahead and aim for the feet for an increased chance to kill. Anything further away from that and you will need two shots to kill with splash damage. This is true until your target is beyond 3.5 meters from the explosion center and then you will need a third splashed shot. The maximum splash range of the EPG detonation is just over 4.5 meters and if you are in that space then each shot will only do very minimal damage. We can see in this footage that one meter in Titanfall is really not that much and this gives us a good idea of how close you will need to be to strike and kill an enemy target. You should really be trying to get direct hits, but if your enemy is low because of team fire or because you have already missed half a shot, then aiming to kill them with splash damage can be a lot more reliable. The other interesting thing to note is that headshot damage applies to splash damage as well, so if the splash is coming from above the target, you can push a bit more damage out of that explosion. The splash damage of this gun also affects you the exact same way as it affects your enemy, so be careful not to shoot walls and kill yourself, because you certainly can. Now when it comes to Titans, the EPG will do 700 damage due to its grenadier nature, even if you do not hit a critical spot. However, if you do manage to land a critical hit, that damage will go up to 1050 damage. This makes it exceptional at bursting damage into Titans, so keep that in mind. However, it is not quite good enough to outclass a true anti-Titan weapon. Let's move on to the spread and recoil of the weapon, including what happens when you aim down sights. To make this quick, the weapon has no recoil, no spread, and no bullet drop. When you aim down sights, you don't really aim down the weapon sights as such, you just zoom in your field of view a little bit, acting like binoculars. This has no effect on the weapon's functionality, other than helping you see more distant targets. Now to talk about aim assist. This weapon has the standard Titanfall aim assist package, which will help draw the reticule to targets within 42 meters, or up to at least 200 meters when aiming down sights. 
This won't help you much with the EPG however, as the aim assistance on console is more likely to pull shots off targets as grunts run across your screen than to actually help you. If you're on PC, aim assist doesn't really kick in and you probably won't have to worry about this. Let's go now and run over the animation speeds before we talk about some tactics. The EPG will reload faster if you leave at least one shot in the magazine when you begin the reload sequence. If you do this, it will only take 2.9 seconds to complete the reload. However, if you empty the magazine entirely, you will have to go through a slightly longer reload of 3.2 seconds. Taking the speed reload perk will decrease both of these times, with the tactical reload speed being reduced to a neat 2.03 seconds and the empty reload speed will be reduced to 2.24 seconds. The moral of the story is try not to completely empty the magazine before reloading, unless you really need that last shot to kill an immediate enemy. As for that aim down sights animation, or what is perhaps more appropriately named a zoom in animation, this will take 0.2 seconds, or if you're using the quick aim perk, which I really don't think you need for the EPG, it will take 0.1 seconds. Now that basically sums up all of the properties of the EPG. Now I'm about to run over the tactics that work well with this weapon, but if you do really like seeing this kind of in-depth analysis, please take a moment to subscribe to the channel and drop us a quick like. Remember that what follows is mostly my own opinion, and if you disagree, I would love to hear the tactics that you find effective in the comments below. The EPG has two different ways that it can kill people. It can kill through insta-kill effect through its direct hits at any range, or it can kill through indirect splash damage by striking surfaces near the target. The first option is obviously much faster, but it requires a much higher level of skill to achieve with any consistency. Killing with splash damage is often more reliable at putting damage on a target, but it will take longer and you will often need multiple shots. The other factor to consider when trying to land splash damage is how your target is moving. If they are slow, stationary, or even just traveling along the ground, it will make splash damage easy to land pretty quickly. However, in the event that they are skilled with Titanfall's movement system, they may be spending less time on solid surfaces and more time in the air, which is where players skilled at predicting direct hits will thrive as splash damage becomes next to impossible. In truth, the best pilots who use the EPG will combine both of these modes of damaging pilots depending on their situation. They will consider how the enemy is moving and how much time they have to kill a target before they get shot at themselves and then choose the optimal method for those circumstances. This leads me to my next point. Your movement is incredibly important in using the EPG well. In a straight up gunfight, the EPG will not usually win against most automatic weapons when it comes to the time to kill. This is because often an enemy shooting at you can kill you before your shot lands on them, and if you miss that first shot, this applies doubly so. Now there are two ways around this, and the first is to use the element of surprise to get that shot off and kill or seriously wound the target before you are even discovered as a threat. And no, I am not talking about using cloak tactical. I am talking about using the high ground. Grapple, wall hanging, and good movement skills allow you to remain above your enemy. You always want to have an elevation advantage when using this gun, as with most grenadier weapons. It will help you with ambushes, and also splash damage is significantly more relevant when shooting down along a vertical plane, where even missed shots will hit the ground and damage the target, rather than just whiz past the enemy's head. The second way to get around this delayed time to kill is to remember that the EPG works well as a fire and forget weapon, and you do not have to have line of sight to an enemy to actually kill them. You merely have to shoot where they are going to be, before disappearing behind cover or around a corner. Expose yourself for just long enough to take the shot, and then focus on avoiding damage. After all, you do have a full second before you're able to fire again. This can take multiple forms, you can either be peeking out and dropping back in behind a corner, or it can be achieved while on the move, shooting in the open and sliding into cover. Again of course, movement is critically important. This weapon also excels at damaging titans while on the run. When focusing down a titan you are probably still better off with an anti-titan weapon, but the EPG is more than capable of helping out with pot shots here and there. I'll take some time now to add a note on loadout synergies. 
I really think that grapple is by far the best option if you want to get the most out of this gun. The other tacticals can be fun, but it's the elevation that really unlocks its potential. The ordnance slot is up to you, but the sidearm choice is much more important. Often when you get splash damage on a target with the EPG, it is much safer to finish off the enemy with your sidearm than trying to take that second, third, fourth EPG shot, especially if they have taken to the air or somehow gained elevation on you. With that in mind, you need to pick a sidearm that you are really comfortable with using. My recommendations for this role are the Hammond and the B3 Wingman pistols, although the Mozambique also does quite a decent job. To finish up, I just wanted to mention how this weapon fits into Frontier Defense. As a Grenadier weapon, it is well suited to this mode, being able to damage enemies of all enemy types with a high degree of efficiency. The advantage it has over anti-Titan weapons is that it never runs out of reserve ammo, which can be a massive boon, and it is still able to kill whole grunt squads in a couple of shots. The one downside to consider is that due to its slow rate of fire, if you miss a shot or land it too far from a target, even a squad of grunts can do a heap of damage to you or even kill you on the higher difficulties. So you have to be confident with the gun before you take it over an SMR or light machine gun for this purpose. Now this video was a long one, but thank you for sticking around and watching it until the end. In the top right of your screen there should be a poll which will give you a say in what weapon we are going to look at next. Also don't forget to jump on our Facebook page linked in the description below to stay up to date from everything from 4FS Gaming and also catch some extra video content that we should be throwing up there shortly. And as usual, we look forward to hearing your feedback from this video in the comments.